All right, let's get started. Do you still remember a nose pinch off? This kind of concept? Nope. It's been a while. <clears throat> let's do it. Here's a cross-sectional view of the animals. Here's a gate. Is a gate being directly shorted to the channel? Is this the channel? Hmm? Okay. So the gate is not shorted to the channel. So in between, there is a dielectric material. Yeah, it's normally silicon oxide. <clears throat> That's why MOS, right? O stands for oxide, semiconductor, metal oxide, metal oxide, right? Semiconductor, N type, or MOSFET stands for what? Yeah, field, elect, uh, field effect transistor. And if you want to turn on this NMOS, you need a positive voltage, which is larger than the uh, v, v threshold voltage um, over VGS. This is what you have learned in logic. Okay, so that's VGS. So VGS has to be larger than VTH, which is a threshold voltage for this impulse, to turn on the channel, to turn on the NMOS. <clears throat> and also, there's a, another requirement, which is you need a voltage drop across the drain and the source. So here's a drain terminal, D. Here's a source terminal, S terminal. So there's a gate terminal, and you need another voltage drop across this drain source terminals to allow the current flow into the channel. Why is that? Do you remember? That's called VDS. So for the first case, if that's the IV curve, right? That's IV curve, VDS versus IDS. So the current flows through D to S is called IDS, is the current flows through the channel. And we have learned that in logic or analog. That the, the IV curve of the NMOS looks like this. All right. So when VDS is zero, if I have VDS equals to zero, what's going to happen? No current flow. But whenever I have a positive VGS, which is larger than VTH, What's going to happen is the electrons in the p-substrate will be attracted to the channel, to this area, to form a channel of electrons. You can imagine it's going to be a channel like this. However, if there's no voltage drop across these two terminals, there won't be any current flow because uh, there's no pressure for the electrons to flow, right? which makes sense. So that's the case for VDS. So when VDS is zero, there's no current on this IV curve, right? And there are three regions. So when VDS is here, and if there's a very low VGS, this is called the cutoff region. So which means the uh, NMOS is not being turned on. It's off, right? It's no current flow through the channel. If I draw a line here, this region is called linear, the linear region, or the trial region. There's another name. It's less commonly used. It's called 
ohmic region because it's like a resistor it's like a linear curve it, even though it's not it's similar to that the reason is if you have a little delta here so here's a delta ids here's delta vds and delta ids over delta vds is almost a constant which means it's similar to a resistor that's why it's called a linear child or ohmic it's like a resistor in this region in this region it's called saturation region for the cmos for the nmos and here's the cutoff region there are three different regions and for the saturation region there's another name for it it's called pinch off region pinch off why it's called pinched off uh, pinch off region why is that because the channel is being pinched off during this region because at the very beginning we had vds to be zero so the channel looks like this so the channel is shorting these two terminals and if you increase vds if you increase vds what's going to happen Here's a gate. DSG dielectric material oxide. So if VDS increases, the channel originally it, it, it looks like this, right? Shorting these two terminals. And if you increase VDS to a point, it's moving up. So the electron channel is moving up like this gradually, okay, until this point. So at this point, <clears throat> the channel is on the verge of being uh, pinched off, okay. Then what? The channel is pinched off. It's not conductive anymore or it's saturating and why mm, no no more current concrete oh uh, yeah similar so what's happening is on the iv curve here's vds here's ids still this curve it follows this curve no no, no question because we're increasing vds increasing the x axis originally it's zero and now if I keep increasing VDS, I'm going to see an IDS follow this trend, right? Because that's the curve, IV curve of the unknowns. And until this point, VDS equals to a value is called VDS set. And VDS set equals to VGS minus VTH. Remember, remember this. This point, the VDS here equals to VDS set, which is VGS minus VTH. And then the channel looks like this. It's right up here when VDS equals to VDS set. And if you keep moving, keep increasing VDS, keep increasing VDS, <clears throat> the channel looks like this after that VDS set value, which is larger than that value. There's VDS, VGS, there is a channel. All right? And now VDS equals to, you know, after this point, for example, I'm at here right now. So VDS, equals to VDS set uh, plus delta V. So here's delta V. <clears throat> A little increment of the voltage. VGS minus VTH 
plus delta v, right? Okay, the channel looks like this. So the channel actually is smaller than L. So it's called L prime. So why is this still conductive? I mean, you still got current, right? So here's IDS. Still IDS. It's not changing significantly anymore after, after VDS set. So here's VDS set. So the electrons will be attracted to here. You know, these are this is the electron channel, right? It's full of electrons. And the electrons are here because there is a extra V, delta V here. So actually plus minus, that's a delta V, that's a voltage drop across uh, in between these two parts from the N plus and the channel. And right, the electrons will be accelerated through this area and reach N plus and go back to the uh, anode terminal of the power supply. So actually it's conductive. Electrons are going back to the source. So it's forming a circuit. But however, because the delta V, you know, it's a electric field. Uh, it's providing a force to the electrons, so which means it's accelerating the electrons. And we know current flow is actually how the, the amount of charges uh, flow through a specific uh, cross-sectional area per second, right? That's called current. If you have higher speed of electrons, which means the current is going to go up slightly. So if you have a larger delta V, electrons, the speed of electrons is actually going up. So you are getting a higher IDS. But in theory, in theory, in the saturation region is flat. So in, in your simulation tomorrow in the lab, you are going to see that it's actually going up a little bit. Because of this, when the VDS is getting larger and larger, you are getting larger IDS because of the acceleration of the electrons hitting this N plus and going back to the VDS anode terminal. That making sense? And this is called um, channel length modulation. Or CLM. And because it's it's very similar behavior compared to BJT transistors, which we are going to cover in the following days. Uh, the BJT transistor has a similar effect, and uh, which was called early effect. So that's why we just simply using the same name, we just call it early effect as well. I should capitalize it. So if you plot this curve, extend it back to the x-axis, there will be an intersection. And that voltage is called VA, <clears throat> minus VA. Okay. And why it's called early effect? That because this comes too early. <laughs> it's a person's last name is early who discovered this <laughs> many years ago. Okay, that's a... That making sense? Any questions? No? So this is very significant uh, when the uh, foundry process is being scaled down, the technology is scaling down to a sh very short channel. You can imagine uh, if you have a huge transistor, <clears throat> I mean, originally it, it is this, right? And then saturation, and then early effect, this compared to the entire lens is tiny. But if you have a, anything smaller than 200 nanometer, it becomes significant. So it's considerable um, threshold. It's gonna give you a not, consist, a not constant uh, current of IDS. 
um, only significant for small technologies, but not for like 500 nanometer technology. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you remember the IV curve, which is pretty simple? I'll mention this really quick. I know you guys have still remember that. Very quick review. This is the VGS. This is IDS. <clears throat> so the curves look like this. And here is VTH. VGS, not VDS. That's the NMOS. That's the VGS. That's IDS, right? And you have VDS1, VDS2, VDS3. Then you'll know that VDS3 is the largest or smallest. Is this correct or not? Which VDS is larger? So look at VGS. You have a specific VGS here, which has a larger current, and which should have a larger current. Which, which VDS has a larger current? Okay, so which means VDS1 is actually larger. Because it's a specific, it's a, you just turn on this NMOS, and because the VDS1 has a higher pressure, so the electrons are, so more electrons are being attracted to the anode. So this is not right. Okay, that's IV curve for VGS and IDS. Now let's look at IV curve for VDS versus V IDS. Cut off. That's a linear region, that's a saturation region. What are the other names for saturation region? For the saturate for the same region. Saturation and what? Pinch off. What about here? What are the names? Linear and what? Tryout and what? Ohmic. Great. What is this? Region? No current, only some leakage current. Cut off. So the NMOS is off. And I have VGS1, VGS2, VGS3, VGS4, VGS5. Which one's larger? Apparently, VGS5 is the largest. Right? Because under the same VDS, this VGS gives you a largest current. So this, 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 right? So that's the largest. Still remember body fat?
should I draw the v, the gate the same length as the channel length or just like this? Same length. If a small you have a small gate, which means the channel length is actually the same length as the gate, the gate's length. You need to cover the entire channel's length to make it effective um, length for the for the transistor. Right. So here's a little P plus. What's the name of the P plus in electric? It's a P well node. The little P well node. It's directly being sorted to the substrate. That's a wafer substrate. You know, originally you have a, a raw wafer. As a substrate, it's being lightly do doped with the P-type material, so it's a P-substrate, and it's being shorted to the ground always. No one can change it because the substrate is always being shorted to the ground, the lowest potential in the circuit. Keep in mind. And here's a little P-plus material. It's the same material, so they are actually shorted together. I right, couldn't change it if you have a little P plus. So compared to P plus and P sub, what's the difference between these two materials? This is a lightly doped. With P type material. Yeah, it's called P plus because it's heavily doped with a P type material. It's just a lot of it's higher concentration. Heavily doped, so conductivity is higher. So they are shorted together. Doesn't matter if it's heavily or lightly. They are the same materials. They are shorted together. So this has been shorted to the ground. So whenever you have a, that's why you need you need a P well node to be shorted to the source whenever you are laying out a NMOS transistor in electric VLSI. If you do not put a P well here, you just have an NMOS like this. It's not being so the source will not be will, will not be shorted to the substrate because it's not being connected to the P plus. You know this so P P N here's a this is a diode instead of being shorted to the P sub. Why do we want to short the source to the P sub? Because if you do not have this source, if this is source terminal, source drain gate, if the source is not being shorted to the P sub, then we can imagine that there's a little, so that's a VGS here, I'm trying to turn on the NMOS, and you can model a little voltage drop here between the, that's B, terminal as a source terminal. The reason I name it as B, if you look at the textbook, they name the sub as B, right? It's called bulk or body. So that's terminal B because P plus is being directly shorted to the P sub, which is the body of the wafer. And here's S, so we can model this voltage source, we can call it VSB. So VSB is a voltage drop from where to where? Yeah, source to body. So source is higher, body is lower. Why body is lower? Because, being, because, the, source, because the body is being shorted to the sub. And the sub is grounded, which is the lowest potential in the circuit. <laughs> so it's always lower. And this is always lower if there is any voltage difference between the bulk or body and the source, which means the source is going to be a little bit higher. This body will be the lowest. So if there's any difference, the source will be a little bit higher. So I, I'm, the way I modeled it is plus minus from right to left. That making sense? I just model something like this. So here's a uh, anode of the modeled power source. And because the VGS has 
inverted the channel you know if i have a vgs which is low, uh, higher than vth then electrons are being attracted to this area and we call it being inverted By what? By VGS. <clears throat> so the channel is inverted by VGS, which is great because we want to invert it by because uh, uh, it's a p-type, right? So to invert it, you need electrons, and so VGS is going to attract the electrons to the channel and invert the channel. And this layer is called inversion layer. <clears throat> That's the inversion layer of the NMOS. Because it's inverted by VGS. Why is being inverted? Because the P is it's a P-type material. And I attract a lot of electrons here. It's not P anymore, it's N. The electrons are native char charged particles, right? And <clears throat> because they are there are electrons being accumulated in the channel, and this is a little un undesired um, positive voltage here being directed shortly to the source. So electrons are going to be attracted to this virtual voltage source. Actually, there's no voltage sources over there. It's just undesired voltage source because I didn't short the source to the ground. So there will be a little voltage difference. All right. And it's going to attract electrons to where? To the ground. <clears throat> so VGS has been working really hard to invert the, 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 the channel. And VSB is stealing the electrons away from the channel to the P sub. So what's going to happen? What's happening here? So the VGS is trying to attract as many as electrons as possible to form a strong channel to allow current flow into the channel. However, because you didn't show the, the source to the ground, as there's a little voltage difference between source and bulk or body. And are losing electrons. So VGS has to work harder to invert it, to invert the channel to make it large enough or big enough or strong enough to turn it on. That making sense? You need a stronger VGS. Or in another word, it can say, what's the consequence of this? Strong VGS is needed, right? And so what's the consequence of this? Less efficient. But I mean, during the interview, job interview, if they ask you to describe body effect, you want to just say one thing, right? What's the consequence of the, when, when the, you are losing, the NMOS is losing electrons in the channel? They just want to hear one word or one sentence, specifically. So the threshold voltage increase. It's getting harder to turn on the NMOS. Keep in mind, body effect, you got higher VTH, and that's it. All right, why you got a higher VTH? Just describe whatever I just covered here. All right, is that making sense? <clears throat> so if you look at the, yeah, I know you guys have, you know, so for, for who have, uh, was in my analog, you have done that lab. If you don't mind, just do it again. It's the only lab which is similar to whatever you have done in analog. Um, just trying to be familiar with, with electric. I was trying to modify it, but I was thinking it's probably not necessary. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty fundamental lab. Just run the NMOS and PMOS and uh, do the IV curves in the layout. So now I'll take a look at it. Here's a gate, little gate. 
and that's a uh, N plus material, N plus material, and this is a polysilicon, which is a gate material, two metal one connector. You look at the little middle hole, uh, the, the hole in the middle, that's a via, it's called a via. It's shorting the polysilicon to metal one. So if you look at the cross-sectional view of that part, so for example, here's NMOS, N plus, N plus, gate. This is uh, silicon oxide material. There are just different layers from bottom to top. That's a piece up, that's a wafer substrate. And here's a uh, gate. It's made by polysilicon, which is called poly for now. It's not metal, it's polysilicon, it's conductive because it's been doped with a silicon material. And there's a not, there are many layers for the C5 C5 technology, right? There are a lot more on the top. And directly above this layer, because this is gay, this is piece up, this is the very bottom, right? The very bottom, you have N plus. And the gate has, so there's a component called the um, via from polysilicon to metal one. So on this layer, you can route metal one, it's metal traces, like the PCB you fabricated, similar, it's metal traces, uh, can tr have a via to connect the gate to the metal. That's just metal one. There are metal two, metal three, totally three metal layers, right? Three metal layers. <laughs> you make the connections to the very top. And there's a little opening on the die of the silicon wafer. It can make the connection from the die to the pins of the chip. All right. Uh, definitely here. There's the opening. And <laughs> this is metal one, metal two, metal three. And that's a polysilicon. Same to these ones, right? So there, there are vias. So it can be connected to metal one. Similar to these ones. And you can directly short, uh, connect whatever here to the outside word. Um, pins, any, any traces. If you can use a wire bonder in the lab, you can directly bond a wire directly to a, a PCB pad you can fabricate uh, with PCB way. You can lay out the PCB, has very little tiny pass. You don't have to put a die in the package like I showed you. The IC package, like 40 pin package or whatever. You put a little die in the middle. You don't have to do that. If you want to save the space so on, on the PCB board to make a really portable or wearable device, like a smartwatch or something, you can directly use a die to use some glue to glue it to the PCB and use a wire bonder to bond it to the PCB pads instead of using the standard IC packages. <clears throat> um, that's why every node in the library, in electric, it has a little via. So you can directly connect the via to metal one from poly. So can you connect? So if I place a poly to metal one, node like this here can i left click and right click it to connect to a metal two node the purple color node it's not supposed to 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 be done in that way because it's jumping over you know it's skipping the metal one layer and directly trying to reach the metal two layer and you definitely, so electric is going to directly create a metal two to metal one node for you. Just place it beside that poly to metal one via. It just looks like not really nice. This is auto control. You can just place whatever node to where, to the specific location. So what you want to do is just do it one by one layer by one layer. If you have a poly, poly to metal one, you just connect the poly, poly's node to a metal one material or node 
and then you want to introduce another trace or wire from metal one to metal two using the metal one to metal two's via, which is this guy. Okay, and there are actually two poly layers in C5. So this is poly one, this is poly two. Right, remember the capacitor you built in analog. If you haven't, if you were not in that class, which is fine. Um, there are two two layers for poly, which means actually in this area, in this region, there's another layer of poly you can use, but you don't have to use it. It's just you being used for creating a capacitor in the first layer here. We probably are not going to not going to use it in this in this class. Okay, so that's the poly to metal one connector, and this is the N plus to metal one connector. If you see a little via in the middle, that's a via as a connector. It's being connected to metal one because this is N plus. And since we need a P well node, so here's a P well node, which is here. That's a P well. See, that's a P plus material. So after you have a, a N most laid out like this, you do need a P well node to short the source to the ground. Okay, let's keep in mind. <clears throat> um. similar to the PMOS material. And you can see that it's not perfectly flat because of the early effect, right? What's the other name for early effect? <laughs> Channel lens modulation, CLM, right? Or early effect. Okay, so in the layout, what happens, what's happening is <clears throat> if there's a transistor being connected, two transistors being connected like this, uh, right. and this guy's grounded, the source of this guy is grounded. So this does not have any er, er, um, body effect. But this one has body effect. Why? Source is not grounded. Let's just ground it. No, it's not going to function in the way you expect. The source should be connected to the drain in this circuit. If you ground it, then it's not making sense, right? So you cannot ground it. So this guy has body fat. So you need a higher voltage, gate voltage, to invert the channel and to turn it on. That making sense? And in the layout view, So these are two unmost transistors, and these are the vias, N plus two metal one connectors. Why two metal one, not metal two? Hmm? That's the closest one, right? That's a, that's a metal layer right up, uh, right above this N plus material. And can you connect eventually connect all the N plus to metal three or metal two. Yes, right? You just need a metal one to metal two vias and metal two to metal three vias. Just keep drilling the holes. So you can go up. And for this schematic, so the layout view looks like this. <clears throat> and you just have a metal one. Metal one, right? So use metal one to make the connection. 
So you can imagine actually this metal is right on the top. So the inmost two inmostes are at the bottom and go up and make the connection. So that's the metal one. And this is being shorted to where? Yeah, answer this question. So what is this terminal? If this is the layout of this schematic, what is, what is this terminal? Drain source gate. Drain. It's here is drain source, drain source, gate, gate, right? So that's drain, that's source, that's gate, gate, drain, source. And what is this source being shorted to? Ground. So in the layout, how can I do that? You need a P plus material. So what's the name of the P plus material in electric? P well. Grab a P well and change the size and short your source to the P well. Use which layer? Which layer? What's the layer of this connector here? Metal one. Okay. <clears throat> and you still also have to re um, export this node as GND. All right, so it's being shorted to the ground. <clears throat> By default, will be the piece up. And for the cross-sectional view of this circuit, <clears throat> that's a layout, that's a cross-sectional view, right? Drain, source, drain, source, P well. <clears throat> so of course, the connection is between the source and drain between these two analysis. I'm gonna make a connection here. And a connection here. All right, so that's actually in the metal one layer. That's a metal one layer. That's a via. Another concept which is important to know. Which one? It just uses a higher gate voltage to turn it on. Yeah. It's fine, it has a higher special voltage, right? It just increases the gate voltage. So you can still turn it on. <clears throat> and another concept is called latch up. I don't use uh, something I just printed. It's hard to do it. it. Takes a long time to do this. Let's take a look at it. Right? If you have a what is this transistor here? That's a PMOS. That's an NMOS. Right? If you have a PMOS very close to the NMOS, then what's going to happen is it's going to form a Here's P plus, right? That's a P material. It's an well. P sub and N plus. It's going to form a circuit like this. It's a parasitic circuit. 
it's not being intentionally designed in that way. But since you just want to make a NMOS, so you have all the PNN materials, it's forming a PNP and NPN transistor. So PNP, NPN, they are BJTs. I'm going to cover, you know, on Friday. So yeah, one more thing. Uh, there's no class on Wednesday. You know that? Class is canceled. PNP, NPN. Right. Let's do it really quick. P, this is NPN. And that's a collector. That's a base terminal. That's an emitter terminal. And if you inject a current in that, into that node, it's going to induce a current flow through from e, C to E. It's going to turn on the transistor. And for the PNP transistor, okay, it flows in that in this way. But also, there will be a current flow through the channel. Doesn't matter, it's a PNP or NPN. Since you have PNP, NPN already being formed by all these <coughs> materials, you know, so that it's going to form an undesired circuit like this. So you can imagine the current is going to flow from VD, it's a higher potential, to P. See the little arrow here? The current flows through here into the base, into the collector of this guy, and then flows through the channel and reach this N plus node and go back to the ground, which is undesired. So it's actually shorting VDD to ground. Which is bad, right? And the engineers already developed the technology to avoid this, uh, prevent this from happening, which is called the shallow trench isolation, or STI. <clears throat> Uh, there's another name for this, it's called box isolation. So what this does is it uh, uh, dopes dielectric material uh, into the P-sub to surround these small slat transistors. So actually it's going down here, if we're, we're looking at a cross-sectional view. It's trying to isolate every single transistor. Uh, here's a 3D view. You can see these are the shallow trench isolation materials here, right? Like here, like a box to protect it. So the reason this can prevent most of the latch up or the current uh, caused by latch up happening is because this material is normally, so it's a dielectric material. And mostly uh, made by silicon oxide, oxide, or made from, and has a high resistance. <clears throat> And whenever it is trying to form a circuit like this, what's happening is it's adding a huge resistor in here and also in here, right? It's a huge resistor to reduce the amount of current which can flow from the VDD to ground. Right? There was still some current flows through this channel, uh, this, you know, this track, but just a tiny. It's way less than if you do not have this trench over here. Is that's a way to avoid latch up. Any questions on this? No? Right, just some important uh, concepts to review for CMOS. And on Friday, we are going to uh, keep working on uh, trying to wrap up pin junctions, and then we are going to start with uh, BJTs. And it's going to be two lectures for BJTs, and then well, uh, we'll start doing our uh, C5 layers and layouts. Okay. See you in the lab tomorrow.